hello, Bible readers, Christians, as followers of Jesus, who worship Jesus and celebrate Jesus' stories where Jesus teaches things like, turn the other cheek, who says things like, peace be with you. We come to a psalm like Psalm 58 and we're like, what? <laughs> This is the kind of thing we read in the Old Testament that makes some people feel like the God of the Old Testament is somehow different than, or more violent than, the God of the New Testament. As though the one Bible is speaking of the one God in two very different ways. Or as some think of it, that there are two different gods. A God of wrath and <clears throat> a God of grace. So it's good for us to do a deep dive on Psalm 58 in particular, so that we can sort some of this out that happens throughout the Old Testament. So first things first, <clears throat> verse 10, right? That the righteous will rejoice when they see vengeance done. They will bathe their feet in the blood of the wicked. Yikes, where is this coming from? In the first posts I published, in this deep dive. I said these psalms were prayed by Jesus himself, like all the psalms, right? This was a prayer book for Jesus too. I said that part of what makes these psalms powerful to us is that they were the prayer book of Jesus. So what does it mean to us, Jesus followers, that Jesus prayed this psalm? I mean, that actually feels even weirder to think that Jesus prayed this one. My Brigham and Bellinger commentary actually cites Dietrich Bonhoeffer's discussion of not only this psalm in particular, but all the vengeance psalms. And of course, we've come across psalmists desiring vengeance before. We will again. Bonhoeffer actually lists 25 of these kinds of psalms and then says, and others. His question is, and this is a great question that Bonhoeffer asks. These kinds of psalms seem to some to be an example of a first stage toward the more enlightened, more peaceful New Testament. On the cross, Christ prays for his enemies, uh, teaches us to do the same. So how can we still, with these kinds of psalms, call for the wrath of God against our enemies. Therefore, the question is, can the vengeance psalms be understood as God's word for us? Can they be understood as the prayer of Jesus? Can we Christians pray these psalms? I mean, that is the question, right? Maybe in the wake of the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus, maybe these psalms have become antiquated. Maybe they should no longer be prayed, right? Maybe we could uh, just ascribe them to ancients who, you know, they just didn't get it like we do. They were more violent than we are. They didn't get to live in our privileged era of life after the resurrection. So out with the old, in with the new kind of thing. In which case, if we're supposed to sort through the Old Testament to identify the parts that are to be thrown out and ignored versus the parts that are to be kept, that still pertain to us, that could get tricky. Because who makes those decisions and how? So before getting his scissors out, Bonhoeffer wants to think harder about these psalms. Notice, he says, the enemies are not just like run-in-the-mill, you know, just these, pe these neighbors I don't get along with. These are enemies to the causes of God. And nowhere does the psalmist want to take revenge in it, into his own hands. The psalmist is always calling on God to bring justice in God's way. In fact, one way to look at this is, and this is interesting, for a psalmist to call upon God to take revenge, to bring justice, the psalmist himself has to like put it out of his, out of, out of his mind, all fantasies of taking revenge himself, right? Like, if you're asking God to do it, that means you've kind of stepped out of the equation. The psalmist is not asking for permission to kill or for the power to be in position to take revenge himself. In all these psalms, the psalmist is admitting, I'm powerless. I'm calling on you, the one true power, God, 
you handle the justice problem that I'm experiencing. So Bonhoeffer suggests that these psalms fall into the part of the Lord's Prayer that goes, let your will be done on earth as in heaven. It really is a, a handing over to God of a psalmist's greatest pains and desires, right? Take revenge. Then comes Bonhoeffer's most insightful claim to me. He says, to be a just God, vengeance, or vindication is the translation Brueggemann likes better, but to be just, God has to do, do something to fulfill God's promise and bring righteousness to all people. Like, righteousness doesn't just happen, God's got to do something. And God's got to bring that righteousness, especially because of those who are on the losing end of things, the marginalized. So Bonhoeffer says, God's vengeance does not end up striking the enemies, the, the sinners. But instead, God's vengeance lands on the one sinless man who stood in the sinner's place. Jesus bore the wrath of God. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. No other than he who bore the wrath of God could pray this prayer. That, that moment, was the end of all phony thoughts about the love of God, those who say that God's love doesn't take sin seriously. God hates and redirects his enemies to the only righteous one. And this one asks forgiveness for them. Only in the cross of Jesus is the love of God to be found, Bonhoeffer says. So let me, let me unpack that a little bit, kind of restate what I just read. God's love is not found in God killing thousands or taking sides in a war or sending disease to the people you can't stand. All these calls for vengeance, for justice, for righteousness, they do get heard, they do get fulfilled, just not in those ways. They get heard and fulfilled on the cross. That's why Bonhoeffer says the vengeance psalms lead to the cross. They lead to the cross of Jesus and to the love of God, which on the cross forgives the enemies. I can't forgive the enemies of God out of my own resources. Only the crucified Jesus can do that. And I threw him. Thus, the carrying out of vengeance, like that called for in Psalm 58, becomes in Jesus grace for all people in Jesus Christ. Because sometimes you and I are the enemy. That kind of insight, that kind of faith is why Dietrich Bonhoeffer is still celebrated in our church nearly a hundred years after he wrote this. Like all the Psalms, these vengeance Psalms are honest. They show that faith in the Psalter is not idealistic, but disturbingly realistic at times. Life can be disturbing, so the Psalms can be too, which is why no parts of the Old Testament and no psalms need to be cut out from our Bibles. Whew. As much as the psalms of praise do, these psalms also lead us to Jesus, who receives God's wrath, that we and all may live in forgiveness, in mercy, and in steadfast love. I'm one with my God. My God is with us, all of us, at all times and in all places.